Hello, Nature Journal friends. My name is John Muir Laws, and today I'm going to show you how I put watercolor on a drawing of a bird. I taught a little workshop today on just this subject, and I'm still kind of getting the logistics worked out of this Zoom platform. Uh, when I looked at my videos at the end, I realized that you could only see a tiny little image of the drawing that I was work on, working on, and so I'm going to try to reshoot the uh, the entire workshop so that you can watch the brush strokes in a little bit more detail. The drawings that I am going to be doing are based on a series of photographs by Vivek Kanzodi, um, and you'll see those on the website birdpixel.com. I recommend that you folks go there to get a hold of reference material. For this workshop, you can download a um, you can download this this worksheet, and what it has is line drawings of the different birds we're going to be working with. So, if you, if you look in the show notes below, um, you will be able to find a, a link to this. So, take this, print it out. You can do it on just regular printer paper, or if you if you print it out on something that's more cardstock, the watercolor won't make the page quite as wobbly, and I think you'll find that a little bit easier. So let's take a look, and I'm going to walk you through a three-step process that I use in doing most of my bird drawings. As a matter of fact, this is the approach that I use for most of my illustrations. And you see those, those basic steps right here. What I do is I start by putting in the shadows. And you can see an example of that on these, first, on these lower two birds here. I've taken a kind of light gray and I've painted in my shadows. And then I let that letter, layer dry, and on top of that, I'm going to be painting first the local color. That is, you know, if the back of the bird is green, I'm painting green. If it's orange, I'm painting orange. So the local color, and in doing this, I usually start with the darker colors and I work my way towards the lighter colors. And at the very end, I'm going to be dropping in um, a little bit of details. So those steps are the shadows, the local color working light to dark, and then the details. So let's take a look now. I'm going to work at uh, redrawing or, or repainting that black, Blackburnian warbler and the little bee eater, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of a shadow in on this first bird. As I do this, I'm going to be imagining that the light is, is coming from behind here. And um, so if you imagine the light kind of coming down from the back here and, and shining on the back of the bird. There we go. Um, that's going to be my light direction. So that means that the belly area over here is going to be in greater shadow. And the back of the bird will be catching a little bit more light. When I'm painting my shadows, what I do is I use um, sort of a purplish gray mixture on my palette here. This is my kind of gray mixing area. area. And one of the colors that I have up here is a color by Daniel Smith Fine Watercolors, and it's called uh, Shadow Violet. And um, it's a sort of purplish gray, and I'll take that and kind of mix it with some of just the gunk that I have there on my palette, a little bit more of that shadow violet. And I'll show you off on the side here what that color looks like. It's a, it's a, it's a purplish gray. And the purple gray colors are nice because they're gonna play well with others. If you have, if you have too much, um, if you have too much of uh, blue, in your in your uh, gray tone mixture, then when that mixes with yellows, it's going to turn things kind of a strange green color. So a good sort of general go-to color for this is going to be this 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 purplish gray. Right, so I am going to test over here on the side. Got a little bit too strong. A little bit better. I'm going to start with areas that will be kind of deeper in shadow, and I'll work my way out to lighter. So Underneath the wing here, we're probably going to catch a lot of, of the 
the shadow down there. And I am then pulling that up to the belly here. And I'm not bringing this shadow color all the way to the edge. I'm kind of letting a little bit of light be underneath it. Um, I'm going to have on the edge of the scapular feathers here, here is a little bit of shadow, edge of these covert feathers. I'm going to put in a little bit of a hint of a shadow in there. This is the back and the edge, sorry, the edge of the scapula is coming all the way over here. Um, I'm going to put in a bit of shadow underneath these covert feathers here. And I'm also going to have a little bit coming down here underneath underneath the tail. On the, the stick that it's on, there's going to be shadow. So it's casting a shadow in this area of the stick. And then there's the underside of the stick. So I'm going to have imagine kind of wrapping, wrapping a shadow around the branch here. And there on my stick. The final thing I'm going to do, my brush is almost out of gray, but I'm going to put a little hint in here underneath the throat. All right. So there is just a little bit of shadow painted on that critter. It's easier to visualize the shadows when there's not a lot of other things going on. So um, on, this, on this next bird here, I'm going to imagine that the sunlight is kind of coming from very much behind. Um, so we're kind of getting this bird backlit. And there will be a little bit on this edge that will be getting some sunlight, but mostly this is going to be a backlit bird. And as I paint that bird, um, I'm not going to bring the shadow all the way to the edge. There's a little bit of light will be kind of sneaking around. Here's the edge of my shadow. And that's going to come here on the throat as well. And bring that down across this body here. If I had already painted all the details in on this bird, doing something like this would mess up a whole bunch of the painting that I would already have laid out and would be really damaging, really frustrating. Um, but because I haven't put all that information down yet, I still have this, this mostly undone bird here. Um, I'm not destroying detail that I've put in. So there's sort of a backlit shadow zone right there in the middle of the, the core of this bird. This is a, a little bee eater, gorgeous, gorgeous little animal. Um, the next one over here is a white crown sparrow. So let's take a look at how I might do that. On the white crown sparrow, I'm going to again imagine that this light is coming very much from straight down on the back here. Very often you'll see scientific illustrators, it's sort of a convention that we use, that the light comes from the left side. And the reason is, most scientific illustrators are right-handed. And so um, if you have your light coming from the left, then you see how you can see the shadow of my own hand? I've got my light over there because my, it's only where my extension cord reaches. Um, but um, it casts a shadow over my paper. And so to avoid that, a lot of the illustrators will have the light coming from this side. Um, I'm going to turn on one more light here to give me a little bit more. Uh, luminosity in here. But, um, but you can see that so you can avoid the whole kind of shadow being cast across your drawing if you have your light sitting on this side of your table pointing this way. So if you had an object that you're drawing, you'd be looking at the light on it. Because of that, just a lot of drawings that scientific illustrators do are done with light coming from the left side of the drawing. All right, let's take a look at this one. I'm going to have some here on the back. Um, there is going to be this side here. We're going to have our shadow coming in. 
And that's going to continue down onto the wing, especially the sort of near side, maybe the part of the upper part of that wing catching more light. Um, here on the side of the body, we're getting, getting some shadow and then down here, leaving a little edge of the shadow here and there. And I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on the underside of the bill here. There it is. And the final one here, let's have another one where light perhaps comes from this direction. And so the far side of this head is going to be more in shadow. So there, over that side, you're in shadow. Here's your shadow coming down on the side of the of its head here, shadow cast across its back, leaving that little glowy edge. Maybe a lot of that wing will be shaded, shaded. And up underneath here. Um, there will also be a little bit of shadow around the edge of the belly here. And I finally have a shadow on the stick. Let's give this one a stick shadow too. Body and shading everything here. There. Sometimes you put a little bit of shadow right under the wing, just sort of pops that pops that wing up off the body a little bit. Might have. All right, there we go. Those are those are my sort of my cast my cast shadows. That's step one. I painted my shadows, and again, just the the style points. I'm using kind of a purplish gray mixture. It's not too bold a uh, shadow in there. Um, if I put it in too dark, it's going to be too much of a pattern and interfere with the ability to see the colors on the warbler and the other birds. And also, if I um, if I uh, get in here and I, I make my shadow um, just sort of a charcoal gray color, sometimes that really dull color will just mute a bunch of, of, of colors. But I I find often that you know, with this this purple gray mixture, it's just a it's an ideal it's an ideal value for my my shadow. I'm going to get a few other little feather edges right in there. A sharp little brush edge. You can move mountains. Yeah. All right. So in this next stage. I'm going to start drawing or painting these birds, and I'm going to start with the lighter values, and I'm going to be working progressively to darker values. This is a big, a big trick, a big strategy. You'll see lots of watercolor artists use, and um, I do this this all the time. So the uh, Blackburnian warbler has this wonderful yellow orange head, fading so sort of yellower at the back fading to, to a sort of a deeper orange, or I should say intensifying to a deeper orange uh, closer to the beak here. So we're going to have that kind of a fade going on. There's also a little bit of blush of yellow over the body. So what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take um, a little bit of yellow paint and 
Test that off on the side. That may be a little bit too intense. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to get rid of some of my paint on my brush. Just lightly paint that up into, into there. So there's a little bit of yellow. Very, very faint. With watercolor, you make things lighter, not by adding white to it. You just get rid of some of the paint. You add more water to it. If you're using a water brush like I do, you just you get rid of some of your paint. I've got a little towel right here, an old sock. Get rid of some of that paint, and now it's painting lighter. Um, now I'm going to get that into more of a, an intense, an intense uh, yellow, orange. This is new gamboge. Gamboge? I don't know how to pronounce it. And I am, and that just, it sort of, uh, when you dilute that paint color, it just sort of makes this very lovely gold and color. So I'm going to just paint this over this entire head under the face here. If there are parts that you're later going to be doing darker, you can just paint right over those things. So there is my um, my first layer going light. Now let's make that just a little bit more intense coming in here. Over the face. And I'm getting rid of some of the paint on my, on here, using that thin clean brush to smooth some of these together. I think I want a little bit more yellow. I'm going to take some Hansa yellow and just click that out here. Yeah. And then I'm going to take some some orange paint and bring that right into the, the, the front of the face. See right now that's that's looking really, really harsh, really, really sharp. That, that line now I'm going to clean my brush. The paint is still damp, and I'm gonna soften that edge. more of a smooth transition. And lastly, I'm just going to pop a little bit more of it right in where the, the deep attaches. So I get this transition right there into the face. Notice that I work from lighter values into progressively darker values. Now, let's take a look at the, the, the wings in the back here. There's some really neat um, black and white uh, patterns on the back of this warbler. There's a white stripe that is in the back up here. There's a patch of the coverts here that are white and extending out into here. And the edges of these tertial feathers are also white. So what I'm going to do um, in order to get that, I'm going to put a piece of paper here so that I don't uh, damage the paper over here too much with the side of my hand. Okay. I'll just go a little bit closer with this bird. A little bit closer with this bird. <clears throat> We'll go a little bit closer. There we are, thank you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to put a mid grayish brown tone into the backs of the, the wings and the, the tail here. So for my brown, I'm going to be mixing Daniel Smith uh, Bloodstone Genuine, which is a very dark, wonderful dark brownish color. Um, with some of the grayish gunk that is on my palette. And I'll test that over here. It's looking a little bit too... Uh, 
from there, that's good. I like, I like that color that I'm getting. All right. So here I go. Now these three tertials have these little white edges. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, here's, here's a little diagram of the tertial feathers. There's three of them. And they kind of overlap like this. One, two, oh, here we go. One, two, three. And they each have a little white edge on them like that. So if I paint this feather dark, but leave that part and then paint this next feather right up against that edge, leave its edge dark, and then paint right up against this edge here. And leave, and leave those whites. Because same leave the dark. Now leave those whites. And then I get these, these three white edge tertials. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do back here. Make sure that I have a sharp point. Make sure that my, uh, I like the, if I get the right consistency of paint, this sort of light flowing, I can make very, very fine, fine lines and put in lots of little details. All right, here we go. I'm going to come from this back edge down to the edge of that first tertial feather. And I'm going to come on the top of the next tertial feather, come up against that white edge, and it in. So the back edge of that side of this, this feather makes that little white edge on that first tertial. Now, Yeah, I've got these three white edge tertial feathers, and I got those by just leaving some white space. Now, these secondary feathers and some of these primary feathers in this zone here, you can see they, the, the feathers will have little white edges on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a set of just parallel lines going in this direction all the way up to the edge of these. And I'm going to do that. <clears throat> Watch this little stroke technique here. I'm going to not push my brush, because then I get this broad, gnarly line. If I drag the tip of my brush, I can make very, very fine lines. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag my brush tip. Mm -hmm. That's my color. That's the thickness and consistency. I'm going to make a few little test lines out here. Yeah, there it is. That's what I want. Now, here I go. I'm right in here. I've got the side of my hand flat on my piece of paper. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. All the way up to where they meet those greater covert feathers right along there. Recharge my brush, give it a little spin to make sure it is sharp. Take it for a test drive. I like it. And here we go. Need more paint getting pale. So as you paint with a water brush, instead of your line sort of just petering out and stopping, it just becomes more pale. You hit some of these lines. No, that was a little bit too thick. That's all right. Then you only see these lines in the secondaries and in the primaries in there, not towards the tip of the wing here. And that's going to take dark paint. Come along here and those 
in. And I'm going to get rid of some of the paint on the edge of this brush. I'm going to make this edge a little bit softer. There you go. So I've got dark. Window light. There's a good kind of a funky transition right in there. But don't worry, I'm going to be hitting this with another coat of paint, which will tie this together in just a moment. First, I have to let all this, this dry because I don't want to lose those lines. If I go over those lines while they're a little bit damp, they will just, they'll move, they'll, they'll disappear on me. But if I go over them after the paint has dried, then um, I'm going to be a very happy guy. Um, I'll be able to see them through the next coat of paint. All right, here's the allula, this little sort of strange feather that is attached to the bird's thumb. These are primary coverts in there. Um, I'm now starting to kind of reload my brush, mixing a little bit of just some of the dark black gunk in with, see the sort of slight color change there? These covert feathers right in here are um, they have a little white tip off on the bottom of them um, The darker in here are my primary coverts coming down here. I'm now going to jump over onto the back of this bird and put the scapular feathers here. The There are uh, coming into the back of the bird up this way. Um, my brush is going to be starting to run out of uh, run out of, of dark paint, and I want that to happen by the time I'm kind of working up in the, the upper parts because that'll make those parts just a little bit lighter. Um, here we go. I'm going to. back of the bird, the scale feathers, there's a little bit of a white area um, on the edge of the feathers there, so I'm going to leave, intentionally leave this little section white coming up into the, 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 the tail. But see, now my, my brush doesn't have as much pigment in it. See, it's, it's a lighter, it's a lighter value. I like this. I like this. This is what I want. Because I want the part that is touching sunlight here on the back to be a lighter value. And I will be adding another coat to, uh, to kind of get it darkened right around the face here in just a moment. I like, I like that kind of lightening towards the back. That's the sunlight hitting that part there. Right now, let's deal with this bit in here. I am just taking a little bit of kind of a light brown um, from my palette here. And I'm testing what colors I get. Test, 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 test. Okay, that's good. And I am going to stroke over these. You see how those, those lines still show up? That's what I want. These lines still to show up, but they're kind of kicked back a little bit. The exception of that was one, two, three of the tertials. That gives me just uh, get some good detail in that wing, but uh, I like that. Now. I'm going to keep going dark. So I'm going to get some just black paint here on my palette. Let's see. Yeah, there's my palette. Black paint. 
Uh, focus you folks. All right, so there's my little birdie sitting there. Um, I now have a darker black paint on my on my brush. And, and what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to start to come in and pop a few details with this dark blackish, blackish paint. I want it to be the right temperature. I want it to be liquid, not drippy water. Um, yeah, that's good. I've got a good, good texture with it. And I'm going to just tuck some black feathers in around the beak here. And if I want, I can, I can have some of these feathers just ever so lightly kind of sticking into this edge just a little bit. Um, maybe a few right in here. I'm going to put some black feathers in here, these scapular feathers, kind of lined up. And now, this is, this is a really fun part. I'm going to start to draw in detail. So here's a little suture between the upper and lower mandible and a shadow on the underside of the bill. I'm going to draw the eye in as a dark form. Part of the drawing can be rather unforgiving. I'm glad it came out loud. Um, now, here's a few little dark feathers that are going to go between the eye and the beak. Again, I suggest going to birdpixel.com, check out the photos of the blackberrian, and you know, sort of see what we're, we're, we're dealing with here. We kind of see what the how this thing is, is, is set up. There's a, there's a patch of orange right under the eye. This thin little area. Cuts. Just about like that. These feathers swing down onto the chest of the bird. And then there are these little streaks of uh, these little black streaks coming down. Now, the streaks on the chest of birds are going to be um, they will be a little bit more compact towards the front edge of the bird. Um, thinner lines. And as you go back on the bird, as you go back further, you'll find that they start to sort of fluff and fan out more. So I'm gonna get a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm gonna fan the tip of my brush just a little bit. And there you go. I'll kind of paint a few of these in with more um, these sort of scratchy strokes. So that gives me a differentiation between the kind of streaks that you get in the upper chest and in the lower. There's just more bushy feathers down lower in the chest. A few other little details. Now that I've got this brown, light brown paint out, I'm going to paint in this leg. And I'm going to paint in the dark on that beak. 
and then I just leave that, there's a darker shadow in there on part of that, and I just went over that, so that I now have, um, and now have a, that puts a, there's a darker shadow in on that part of the beat. Um, if you want your eyes to look alive, I've got a little gel pen here, here's a little dot of a highlight. Now it kind of looks like it's a wet eye, it's look, looking, looking back at you. Birdie is just about done. I'm gonna do a couple, couple little sort of subtle changes. I'm gonna put, take my brush and put it down for a moment. I'm gonna pick up, this is a 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come around a few places at the edge of this, just kind of crisp up, crisp up a few of those edges. A little bit scruffy from there. Let's zoom on that a bit. And focus. So what I'm going to do is just come here on the throat. Two little places in the back. Any kind of tick marks. Off that leading edge of the wing, both put a strong line in there. Carry that into those feathers. And uh, the bird is just about ready to fly. One last detail. What I'm going to do, make sure it's totally dry. I'm going to do that by cheating. I've got my Conair Vagabond 1600. I'm going to hit it with my hair dryer. And once it is bone dry like that, I can then take a white Prismacolor pencil. And you see I'm kind of sharpening the tip of it a little bit right here and sort of smoothing out the point of it, so it'll be less likely to kind of fracture. Oh, look at that big chunk. Well, I'm not going to walk across the room to my pencil sharpener and sharpen my pencil. All right, I'm back. Um, so here is my last little details. What do I do with my white pencil? I'm going to just get a little, few little tick marks of light right in here, a few little lines of texture across here in the back, oh, across there and in the back, a little bit of light kind of coming in here. I'm going to get a hint of some of the back edges of some of those primaries. I'm just going to come coming in a few little places and putting in a just a little little bit of texture. I'm going to come into the base of the throat here. These lines won't show up very well. And. Maybe a little reflected light down on the bottom part of the eye, a little bit of a reflection on the top of the belt. I think I overdid it on the belt. Just get to put in a few little details on your birdie right at the very end. On that stage where you're putting in just a few little details, um, does a lot just to 
make the whole birdie feel as if it is as, as if it is really hyper detailed. Really just putting in detail in a few places that you think somebody's gonna look. Yeah, it is. Just like this edge. I like it. All right, there it is, a little black, Blackburnian warbler. And so we put watercolor on it. We were able to kind of get a sense of value. You can see those shadows showing through, right? That's where it started. And we built it up with those local colors, starting lighter, building darker. And um, here we are. Oh, we have the black rain warbler. Oh, what about this? Maybe we want just a little bit more on the leg here. Oh yeah, that, that's nice. This close leg just gets a little bit of a little bit of detail. And you gotta stop on a drawing before you think you're done. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna stop here. Here's kind of worked out the paint on that Blackburnian warbler. Um, after dinner here, I'm going to come back and we'll work on this one together. Um, so if you might need a snack right now. Um, so go out, get yourself uh, something to nibble on, and uh, I'll see you in a few. And that, my friends, is birdie number one. So that's bird number one um, using that three-step process. We're now going to take a look at a bird with just different kinds of color patterns on it. Um, this will be a bird with that will be beautiful kind of pumpkin colored chest, green back. Um, it's our backlit bird. This is the little bee eater. And again, the reference material that I use to kind of figure out what colors to put where, it comes from birdpixel.com. And uh, you can go there and see all sorts of really great um, bird photography um, that we nature journalers and artists are invited to use as reference material, which is just a fantastic resource. So, a uh, little bee eaters are really, really beautiful little animals. Um, they've got a throat that is just bright yellow, mixing up a combination of some Hansa yellow light and medium here. And I'm going to just drop that right on the throat. And because it's transparent watercolor, what's, what's so cool is you can see that shadow right through it. There it is. You see the shadow through it. Got a little bit too much water on there. So I'm just going to take my brush and soak some of that up. Now it's a little bit too pale. I'm going to get a little bit more thicker paint. Playing with watercolor is all about this sort of dance between how much water is on the paper and on your brush. There we go. You get the sense that there's this shadow on the side of this yellow face. Now, if if I had um, if this had been kind of a, a bluish shadow, this whole zone would be turning green, and that would be sad. But we're doing great, everybody. So now I'm going to mix up just a little bit of a dull orange color, and that's the color that goes across the whole breast and chest here of the little bee eater. So I'm painting that down around the belly. And you see that shadow shows through. Shadow shows through. It's transparent watercolor. So the those 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 shadow layers you still they're doing the they they're 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 sculpting the form of the animal for us. Undertail coverts down here. Just use the same color, a little bit lighter value. So I just what I did is I just rubbed um, my brush on a on a rag, and so it just didn't have as much paint and pigment on it. There's a little bit of a an orange, buffy orange. Oh, that's way too dark. Yeah. I always talk to people about testing your colors before you put them down on the paper. And there I didn't. There I am. And 
their buffy orange upper border to the these little birds that's there so we've got orange coming down here the back is green and there's also this bright blue i think i'll do that right now this is so much fun to do this is fun um, there is a zone that goes above the eyes here that is just bright, bright, turquoise blue. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful little bird. Now, the back of this, this bird, the upper tail covert, the tail here are green, except for a little kind of buffy bar right through there. There's a strange thing about the green in this. The green colors in birds are structural colors, just like the blue ones. That means that they are made by the shape of the little barbules that hold the feather together. So um, at different angles, they will actually look different colors. And something that's neat about these little bee eaters is that when you kind of look at it with light glancing across it, um, if they're a little bit backlit, you see almost this orange glow along the back that they have this orange halo. So I'm just kind of roughly putting in a little bit of orange back there. And then what I will do is I will bring, bring the green up and kind of blend it into that. The other place that there's a little bit of orange on this is right, these are this on the wing here, these are the lesser, medium, greater wing coverts. These are the secondaries here. The secondaries and the primary feathers on this bird are about the same length, so you, you don't really see a step out like you do with our white crown sparrow here. Um, but right in here, there's also a little bit of buffy. Uh, puffy color on, on those feathers. Right there. All right. Now, now, I'm going to get to paint in the green. This is fun because unless you're painting a lot of hummingbirds and things, you don't get to use this color a lot on birds, but there's, it's a very kind of parity, bright, wonderful bright green. So on my palette, what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of fallow yellow green here. I'm going to mix that. I'm, first, what I'm doing just in this mixing area, I'm kind of just sort of seeing how that looks to me. I'm like, oh no, more of that, less of that. And I can play around here trying to match the color. Oh, I'm liking this. There's some serpentine genuine in there, in with all of that. And so I get it kind of looking right here. That doesn't mean it's going to look right on my paper. So the next thing that I do is I test it out on the paper. I put some on the paper and go like, oh, yeah, that's the color I want. So that looks that's like a good color to me. I then spin my brush to get it sharp again. And I'm turning my paper because it's a little bit easier for me to make brush strokes this way. So following the direction of the feathers, I'm just brushing, brushing out here. There we go. Now I just want that little orange edge just to glow a little bit. Such a neat looking bird. Look at the way those colors just dance together. I'm following the direction of these feathers with my brush strokes. If any of my brushes strokes kind of makes leaves a mark behind, then it will feel like, oh, that was that was intentional. That was that was just part of the um, <clears throat> part of the plan. There are the, these covert feathers here. Those are the lesser. These are the medium in coverts. 
And these ones here are the greater in the COVID. It really does help to spend some time studying the anatomy of the bird. So we can make sense of what are these different pieces. These are the tertials, one, two, three tertials. I think those in old green. And then here, I'm going to make this bottom part of the wing green. Got a little bit here. The back of the bird coming down. This is what's called the upper tail coverts. And finally my tail. With a large fine point water brush, you can be very precise in where you place your colors. Yeah, that's great. All right. Now, um, I am going to start to um, add in some darks on this. Um, there's a few kind of dark accents on parts of the body. So I'm going to get some bloodstone genuine, which is a dark blackish brown. And just put that on some part of the wing down here, a little bit on the tail. Not dark feet. And the bill. So I'm going to do for drawing in the bill. Let me zoom in on this. So when I'm drawing the bill, I am drawing in that little line of the mouth and a little bit of the shadow underneath it. And then I'm going to let that dry while I work on, on other parts. We'll come back to that and see why I'm going to have that little dark mark in there, and then we let it dry. There is, right here under the neck, this is a, a dark color right in here. Mm, that's fun to do. Putting in these dark accents is really, really enjoyable. So now I'm going to come around and sculpt a little black mask. It wraps around the bottom of the eye. Comes back here. Let's see. What is the ear patch? Gonna get the paint a little bit darker. Strengthen that right in there in the front. Now I can play with this is probably dry well enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove a bunch of the brown color from my brush tip. Let's see what color I have. I'm going to get there it is, sort of a a, a, a liquidy. Liquidy brown. Yeah. Light, more transparent. And I'm going to just a sharp brush. And here. Paint in the curve of that beat so that that shadow shows through. And that pulls that together. Shadow throws, shows through. 
And I am just about done here. There's one more little piece that needs its accent. I haven't drawn, I haven't drawn its eye. And this, this is gonna be so much fun. See the, the bee eater, its eye is this ruby red, this bright ruby red. So I'm going to mix up just um, a little bit of quinacridone pink and some pyrrole red here. Test that color out here. And if it's too kind of thick and lumpy, then it kind of makes, oh, there it is. So nice sort of smooth, creamy pink. And rather than trying to paint around the pupil, I'm just gonna paint the entire I red. Yeah. The entire eye red. And then I'm not going to mess with it until it's dry. And that, oh, <laughs> we're off the page here. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so the entire eye is red. While that's drying, I'm cleaning my brush back up. Um, and I think I want to just pop that blue in here a little bit more. Good. I is still wet. So while it's drying, I'm going to uh, just play with my pencil a bit. I'm going to come around and just crisp up some of the edges on this bird. And then I am going to um, use the white colored pencil to also just add a little suggestion of, of other details on this. I don't want to hit this with my pencil until it's really, really dry. So that's why this guy comes in again. Sometimes when you um, dry things, you'll turn sort of curl your paper a little bit. So if you can, you can either bend it back the other way or keep the back of it and then it flattens back out. All right, so I'm going to get my um, 0.3 millimeter pencil here, and uh, let's 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 uh, let's just zoom in more on this guy again, so you can see the sorts of marks that I am making as I am coming around on this bird. Right. So here we go. Um, I am gonna kind of crisp up some of these edges, a few little flicks on the forehead, and then, and I like to make a line that in some places is going to be really uh, strong in other places, light. So I come around the edge of this bill. Just make those, that edge a little bit cleaner. And I'm flicking my pencil tip in here on the, on the belly. I'm going to press down a little bit and flick it up. Now flick it up, and that, that just sort of suggests that there's a little, there's a little places where the there's kind of cracks in the in the, the, the fluffy feathers in there. And of this tail gets popped. places along the back. I have to kind of resist the temptation of putting a hard line all the way around the bird. So I want this line to be in some places a little bit, a little bit stronger. And other places lighter. That 
feels a little bit too strong right in here. I, I drew this line right across there. I don't quite like that. So I'm going to just lightly erase it. Put that a little bit lighter in there. Getting better. Um, I can put in a suggestion of a few little kind of lines in here saying that it's fluffy, but I really do not want to overdo that. A few little kind of hints of fluffiness. And then I'm going to come at it with my white pencil. I'm going to flip in. Uh, there we go. Flip in. A few little lines in here, a few little lines up in here suggesting things that might have gotten some sunlight on them. A few little just textural marks. I'm going to put a hint of some reflections underneath the eye, a little bit on the bill up here, a little bit on the forehead. I don't think I'm going to take this gel pen, a jelly roll, and give it a little bright highlight in the eye, the wet eye. There it is. We've got our Blackburian warbler and this beautiful little bee eater now colored up. Our process was we initially hit them with the shadow colors. We then put the local color on top of that. And then at the end, we're just sort of dancing around, bringing in the real dark darks and the details, the, the darks and the details. Those come at the tail end. If you put them in at the start, those will get in your way. And you get something that looks like a textual bird. I like the way that that, that little one came out. So in a future video, we're gonna draw add color to these two. Um, but based on, on what you've seen here, I'm going to suggest that you, um, without my guidance, this is a, a white crown sparrow. This is a blue jay, not a stellar, but a blue jay. And um, go on bird pixel and check out the colors and the patterns that you see on these. And on your own, play with those and add color to them. You can always print out another one of these pages and we'll do those together at another point, but it'd be really interesting just to see, you know, how you would decide to put in the colors um, on, on these two birds based on the general approach which we've seen with these two already. So you can absolutely do this. Um, playing with watercolor, it is it's a matter of, of, of practice and just getting comfortable with how your paints work. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. What you're doing is essentially training your eye, your hand, get, getting the feel of the paints. You're also learning the paints on your own palette. Which ones do I reach for to get that color? Which ones do I reach for to get that color? Um, if you are using a water brush, you're training yourself just to understand when I start to paint with this, it's a more saturated color. After I've been painting with it for a while, that color is becoming less saturated because there is a um, underneath, uh, the, 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 you're running out of paint and, and that water is still coming through. So it's just giving you sort of a tint 
of the color that you had before. And what you'll do is you'll just kind of get an intuitive feel for like how far you can go with this much paint on the tip of your brush. The best way to do it is just by putting in some brush miles with your, uh, with your watercolor. Again, it's a great study to color in and paint somebody else's sketches and drawings because then you're not worried about messing up a drawing that you've worked really, really hard on. And this is just, this is just practice. And you can print out a bunch of these. And I hope that this was a useful workshop for you on how to add watercolor to your birds. I'm John Muir Laws. This is the Nature Journal Workshop. Thank you for joining me today. Take care.